Where does nature study fit into your homeschool science plan? Is it the centerpiece or just an afterthought? Should it even be part of your plan at all? And what is nature study in the first place? Hi, I'm Paige Hudson, and in today's episode of the Teaching Science at Home show, we're going to break down the concept of nature study into building blocks you can use to teach science in your home. Nature study is a style of educating that searches for the principles of science in nature. It became a popular educational movement in the early 20th century, and it's regaining popularity once more among homeschoolers. Anna Botsford Comstock, one of the pioneers of the movement, shares the following about nature study in her book, The Handbook of Nature Study. She says, nature study cultivates the child's imagination. There's so many wonderful and true stories that he may read with his own eyes which affect his imagination as much as fairy lore. At the same time, nature study cultivates in him a perception, a regard for what is true, and the power to express it. Nature study gives the child practical and helpful knowledge and makes him familiar with nature's ways and forces, so that he is not helpless in the presence of a natural misfortune or disaster. In short, Nature study awakens the scientific side of the brain in the same way a good book can awaken the imagination. It helps students to see science face to face, to understand the processes going on around them every day, and to develop in them a hunger to learn more. After all, from the dawn of the ages, science has been found in nature. The study of science began with philosophers observing things in nature that made them question why. As they began to seek for answers to their questions, science was born. Today, scientists still employ the power of observation daily, so it's important that we impart this skill into our budding scientists. And nature study can be one of the tools that we use to train them how to observe, because it teaches the student to slow down and really look and see all the science that is around them. There are two key components to nature study, the nature walk and the nature journal. Nature study begins with a nature walk. This is a time set aside to go out and explore the world around you. You can do this by taking a simple stroll around your block or by setting aside a time to go hike a nearby trail. Usually, these nature walks are spent looking for something specific as you go along, kind of like a walk with purpose. That is, unless you stumble upon something like we talked about last week in learning science on the fly. Basically, as you ramble along the path, you take time to point out the focus of your nature study. So, if you're studying oak trees that week, you will point out any you see along the way. Then take a moment to stop by one of the oak trees so that you can discuss the shape of its leaves, the texture of its bark, and any acorns you may find along the ground. You take time to allow your students to ask any questions that they have and provide them with any important information about oak trees that you would like for them to know. It's really that simple. If you want, you can have your student collect samples, such as a leaf, an acorn, or make a rubbing of the bark of the tree. And then you can step back and get a picture of the whole tree. As you continue on your walk, you can point out any additional oak trees and compare them to the first one that you observed. The second component of a formal nature study is the nature journal. And this is where the student is recording what they saw. Basically, you can pick a spot along your journey to sit down and write about your experience or you can wait until you get home to add an entry into your nature journal. Either way, the nature journal should be a personal record of what the student has learned. In it, they should feel free to glue pictures or samples, draw what they've seen, and record their thoughts. I also recommend that students record at least one scientific fact about the subject being studied and the date with each entry. Of course, be mindful of the fact that you want this to be their personal record, so you're not correcting grammar or using this as a writing lesson. Basically, it's what they found interesting and meaningful along their nature walk so that they can look back and see the different things that they've learned. The nature walk and the nature journal work together to show the student the wonders of science in the world around them. When you use these two tools together, they create a full nature study time, which can be an effective tool for science education. You can use nature study as the core of your hands-on aspect when teaching science, or you can add it on to your current science plan. There are two options for doing this. One, you can take advantage of the impromptu nature study opportunities, like we talked about in the last episode. 
You can look in nature for the things that you're studying in your formal science curriculum. Your second option is to use nature study as part of your Friday fun day plan. When our daughter was younger, we had what I'd like to call Friday fun day. On these days, we would do an art project, go to the library, and set aside some time to find the concepts we were studying in science in nature. I trust that you now understand what nature study is and how you can utilize this beneficial tool as you teach science to your students at home. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Teaching Science at Home show, which is sponsored by Elemental Science. In addition to making these great tips possible, Elemental Science also offers a full lineup of easy-to-use science plans for your home, co-op, or school. Head on over to ElementalScience.com to learn more. <music>